Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a thriller horror film, Afterlife. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with the mortician snapping a picture of a dead person. On the other side, in the bedroom, the teacher shares an intimate moment with her boyfriend. Her boyfriend kisses her neck while he gingerly grinds on top of her. Unfortunately, she's impassive in their session. The boyfriend presses his forehead on hers, then asks about her dispassionate return, but she excuses it with a lie. The boyfriend expresses his sadness about the teacher's change of feelings and smokes in the room. The teacher rolls her eyes and gets out of bed. She sits upright, wearing her daring red lingerie, and goes to the bathroom. A strain in their relationship visibly affects them even with the little things like simple questions which trigger her so quickly. The boyfriend apologizes, but she ignores him. They chat about their relationship and the change he notices about her. It is as if the teacher is a stranger to him. He tells her he wants to be happy again and loves her, but she replies none. While washing, the teacher's nose suddenly bleeds. The teacher then goes to work at school. In her classroom, a student quietly observes the flock of chicks in the glass container. But two bullies intervene and even yanks his shirt, just because he didn't hear them. Just then, the teacher walks in time to stop the bullies from mistreating the student. The teacher accompanies her student to see the chick he claims is dead, but she clarifies it's only scared. Simultaneously occurring, the teacher is drinking her medicines after class, and the boyfriend is in an important meeting, and the mortician delivers the embalmed body to the service. After class, the teacher decides to visit her late piano teacher in the mortuary house, but the student she comes across in the hallway wants to join her. She says that a funeral is a private affair, so letting him attend one is inappropriate. Once she gets inside her car, she immediately brings out her medicine, only to find out she ran out. Before the funeral service, the teacher goes to a drugstore to buy medicine, and quickly drinks them when she acquires them. She even goes to the salon to dye her hair red. At the service, the mortician guards the piano teacher's body encased in an open coffin. The dead's old wife notices the white roses and asks how the mortician knew about them. He replies, it just seems appropriate. The teacher arrives and bids condolence to the wife. She then looks at the body until she sees its mouth open, startling her. She refocuses herself and returns near the body. Its mouth is closed again. Then she glances at the mortician, and he smiles at her. The teacher leaves and searches for her car keys outside, but she finds trouble finding them, so she irritably pours her bag's contents onto the ground. On the window, the mortician keenly observes her movement. He watches her find her keys and cries before entering the door. That night, the boyfriend waits for his girlfriend to arrive at the restaurant. On his hand is an engagement ring kept in a red box. The teacher arrives at the location, and there, he notices she dyed her hair red. She expects him to compliment the new style, but his response is plainly saying she changed her hair. Throughout the dinner, they try their best to prevent a fight, but when the boyfriend's about to propose after his long speech about moving to a new city, the teacher quickly assumes her boyfriend will break up with her. She storms out of the restaurant and enters her car. Her boyfriend follows her and pounds on the window, asking her to talk about things thoroughly. But she reverses the car and drives away. Heavy rain drizzles, and she speedily goes on the highway, crying out her frustration. She fishes for her phone in the bag and dials a number. But she swerves away from something on the road, and things turn black. The next day, the mortician enters the arrangement rooms, where he will prepare a new body. He uncovers the sheet and shows the teacher's body. He begins to collect the accessories, then cuts the teacher's black dress. The mortician is about to cut the strap in the teacher's undergarment when she suddenly wakes up and asks what happened. The mortician explains to her that she died from hitting a truck loaded with metal. But the teacher believes she's not dead, and then the mortician explains she's in denial. The mortician leaves her alone in the room, and she convinces herself she's not dead. On the other hand, the boyfriend wakes up from his bed and calls his girlfriend to check on her. The mortician who took her belongings sees the paper bag vibrating. He pulls out the phone to decline and hides it along with other paper bags in a cabinet. The boyfriend visits his girlfriend's workplace, but the school informs him she didn't request sick leave. Then he sees her house with a bouquet and asks about the teacher's whereabouts. The immobile mother reports that her daughter is dead and blames him for not being cautious around the teacher. He stammers in disbelief that his beloved partner died. The teacher begs to let her go in the arrangement room, while the mortician stitches her cut on the forehead. Tears fall from her eyes as the thread attaches to her skin because she feels numb. Then upstairs, the bell chimes, and the mortician halts the process of stitching her wound. He brings out a syringe and injects her something. He says they'll relax her muscles and stop the rigor mortis from settling. The mother arrives at the funeral parlor to see her daughter. 
And instead of being sad about her daughter's death, she even blames her for dying. Then before she leaves, she instructs the mortician to return her brunette hair. The student from the school cuts out the newspaper about his school teacher, then calls out her unstable mom, who's watching aimlessly at the television. The student is sad because his mother forgot to pick him up from school, and then visited her teacher in the funeral parlor. In the funeral house, the teacher lying on the embalming table regains her strength to move. She presses her neck and wrist, searching for her pulse, then starts hitting her hand on the table to feel something. She panics and composes herself that she's okay. She tries to dial authority, but the phone is unavailable. So she pounds on the door, asking for help. The boyfriend visits his girlfriend's body outside the parlor, but the mortician says it's only accessible to families. He cries, begging to at least catch a glimpse, but the mortician denies him. The boyfriend leaves defeated. Then the mortician visits the teacher in the arrangement room and sees her sitting on the floor near the door. She asked about the person who visited, but he reasons he didn't allow him to see her so as to prevent more heartaches. However, she doubts his words and asks why the mortician keeps her from the world. Then the mortician replies, you're all the same. You all blame me for your death. The mortician continuously manipulates the teacher to keep her questioning everything. The teacher calls her lunatic, which is true. The boyfriend visits the police station to see the captain, but unfortunately, he's out of the station. So he waits outside the office and stumbles upon the police impound. He sneaks inside and finds his girlfriend's car where he sees the shattered windows, the messy interior, and a bloody towel on the steering wheel. He examines everything until his girlfriend suddenly appears in front of the car. He terrifyingly stares at it until the captain calls his attention. The boyfriend asks if the captain can pull strings to see his girlfriend, but the captain declines. He squeezes a bopping figurine he got from the car due to frustration and continues to blame himself for her death. Back in the arrangement room, the teacher takes a pair of scissors, then comes across an older woman's dead body. She mumbles to herself that she doesn't want to die like the older woman. She patiently waits on the embalming table with the scissors on the back. Then the mortician enters the room, and he sees the older woman's body uncovered. He then touches the teacher's hair and prepares the dye. He advises her not to be afraid of the dead because she's dead. Such then, the teacher shouts she's not dead and slashes the scissors towards the mortician. But it only hits his mixing dye, and she runs to the door. She budges the door, but it's locked. Trapped, she raises the scissors to threaten the mortician not to approach. But the mortician still bravely dares to walk towards the teacher, grabs the scissors she's holding and aims at his neck. The teacher once again questions the validity of her death because she can feel herself breathing. But the mortician once again lies to her. The reason why he can talk to dead people is not that she thinks she's alive, but rather he has a gift. His gift is to speak to both the living and the dead to help them achieve the transition. She again raises her claim, but he dismisses it and questions whether the teacher's life is even worth living. Momentarily, the drug hydromium bromide injected into her in the beginning sets in, and she hallucinates about seeing the older woman's body standing alive. Then a vault door opens, revealing a dark place with stars in the sky. She walks in, and then a hand pulls her inside. It's where she meets her younger self expressing her disappointment and insults her by saying she's better off dead. She wakes up from the dream and destroys every item in the room. The student visits the funeral parlor for his teacher, but it isn't ready yet. Then the mortician instructs the student to dispose of the almost withered flower, but the student smells it, and the mortician says it's already garbage. The mortician returns to the arrangement room and finds it a mess. He scolds her, but the teacher ignores his words and weakly asks if she's actually in an afterlife, because it feels like hell to her. As for the boyfriend, he once again hallucinates about seeing his girlfriend in the bathroom. Naked, she pulls out her beating heart, and blood gushes out from her chest and streams downward. She emotionlessly stares at him. Then he screams and wakes up. He realizes it is just a dream. The mortician brings the dress bought by the teacher's mother. The mortician hangs his coat on the rack beside the dress. The teacher sneaks out the keys, and the mortician leaves with the white van, the similar van that causes the teacher's incident in the beginning. Simultaneously, the mortician drives to the gas station, and the teacher uses the stolen keys to open the locked door. The mortician realizes he lost the key when he paid for the gas, so he drives back to the car, and the teacher, who successfully escapes the arrangement room, watches his car park in front of the building. The mortician searches for the lost teacher in the funeral parlor, while she stumbles and crawls from places to hide. Then she reaches a room with a telephone in the middle of the room. She contacts her boyfriend, who answers it with disbelief and thinks it's a prank. His response shocks the teacher, because he can even hear her. 
Just then, the mortician appears at the door to get her. The teacher asks for more proof if she's dead. Then the mortician makes her face the mirror. She sees herself white as a birch tree with sunken eyes. And finally, she's convinced that she's dead. The teacher exhales, and right then, a condensed breath marks the mirror. But she fails to notice it. She's still alive. But the mortician makes her appearance of the corpse by drugging her. The mortician wipes it away before the teacher can see it. On the grounds, the student catches his teacher on the window. The student shares his information with the boyfriend. But he doesn't believe him and slaps the student for accusing him he didn't love his teacher anymore. The student comes to the funeral home, and then the mortician tells him that they both have a gift, just like Jesus who resurrected Lazarus. He offers to teach him more, and the boy accepts. Later that night, the student buries a live chick in a box. Before the burial, the teacher requests one more look at herself during the final preparations. The mortician puts out a hand mirror. But this time, when she looks in the mirror, she detects her breath collecting on the glass. Eyes wide, she accuses him of lying about her death. However, he shushes her and injects her the drug one last time, causing her to pass out. The boyfriend arrives at the place, and he puts the engagement ring on her finger at the service, the ring he planned to give her the night before the crash. The movie ends with the heavily drunk boyfriend confronting the mortician, who appears to taunt him, and encourages him to see that the boyfriend's girlfriend is truly dead. The mortician informs him that time is running out. The teacher in a coffin wakes up to the sound of the throwing dirt. She sobs and feverishly claws the lid's satin lining. The boyfriend hurries to the graveyard while drunk. Then a flash of light blinds him, because he happened to collide with a van due to drunkenness. But he doesn't know this yet. The boyfriend somehow is still driving, and he hears sirens from afar. Then the boyfriend reaches his girlfriend's casket, digs the ground, and hoists her from the casket. He embraces her, and she confesses she always loved him. But then the boyfriend suddenly asks about the odd noise he hears. Then the teacher in his arms disappears and the teacher's voice echoes in his mind and says, the mortician is preparing his tools to work on your body. The boyfriend dreams about saving his girlfriend successfully when in fact he was too late because he got into an incident. And the boyfriend wakes up and finds himself on the embalming table. It appears the mortician watches his next victim and waits for the opportunity to steal their body if involved in an incident. The mortician is a serial killer that murders people who he perceives as useless and not worth clutching into in life. He photographs their unconscious body before the service and then posts the prints onto his bedroom wall. According to the number of photos on the wall, it's evident the couple aren't the first victims. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.